What's up everyone? The US housing market has seen a 2.3 trillion drop in value since its June peak. To give this context, the total value of US homes was 45.3 trillion at the end of 2022, from a record high of 47.7 trillion in June. A decline of 2.3 trillion or 4.9%. Back in 2008, home values plunged 5.8% from June till December. So this correction is not as bad as 2008, at least not yet. In fact, some industry experts think that the housing market has already reached its bottom. I emphasize some. Fannie Mae is not one of them. According to Fannie Mae, talk of a housing market recovery is overblown. They think that although the economy is off to a surprisingly strong start in 2023, that it won't last. And as far as the housing market is concerned, they think that the fundamentals point to further weakness ahead. So today, we're going to take a look at why Fannie Mae thinks that the housing market is in for a lot more pain. So let's just dive right in. According to a Fannie Mae report, report published this week, they predict that the housing market's relatively high note in January and February may prove to be temporary. While some optimism appears to have crept into the housing sector, it represents an increase from very low levels of activity and is at risk of declining again if rates reverse, wrote economists at Fannie Mae in their latest report. And Lance Lambert's latest article in Fortune titled, Fannie Mae, the housing market just pulled a head fake. He specifies two main reasons why Fannie Mae thinks the housing market will not recover in 2023. The first one is that Fannie Mae thinks that high mortgage rates will continue to keep many buyers sidelined. This is definitely true in a lot of markets across the country. High rates coupled with still high prices simply makes buying a house unaffordable. We did get a small dip in rates at the beginning of the year and activity did start to pick up again in the housing market. But just as quickly, rates started to climb again, causing some buyers to bow out of the market. Second, Fannie Mae economists think that home listings will remain constrained as few sellers are eager to trade in their 3% fixed mortgage rate for a 6% or more mortgage rate. Ongoing affordability constraints, the lock-in effect creating a financial dis incentive for the majority of current homeowners with mortgages to move and still tight inventories are expected to continue to limit home sales. Additionally, the 10-year treasury has increased meaningfully in recent weeks, suggesting that mortgage rates are likely to begin rising again, wrote the Fannie Mae economists in their recent report. I'm experiencing this firsthand in my market here in Montgomery County, Maryland. I have sellers that really want to put their house on the market. They either want to move to the east Eastern shore or down south for a more relaxed lifestyle, or they simply want to downsize from the big single family home to something more manageable. The problem is they can't wrap their heads around selling their home where they have a 3% or lower interest rate from refinancing a few years ago to then go buy a new home and have an interest rate of double or more than they presently have. So they're simply choosing to stay where they are. This is the lock-in effect, which is exacerbating the inventory problem. Now, I know inventory differs greatly depending on where you live and your current housing market. But I can tell you here in the DC market, we have very little inventory. In fact, I wrote an offer on a house in Potomac, Maryland a few days ago that already had 16 offers on it. The house went way over asking with no contingencies. And this is not the anomaly. We're experiencing multiple offers on most houses that come on the market that show well and are appropriately priced. I'm starting to think we're in for another spring market filled with crazy bidding wars, which honestly will destroy the housing market. It was so crazy back in 2021 and the beginning of 2022 that it became simply unsustainable which is why the Fed Reserve had to step in and start raising interest rates. And where I am isn't nearly as bubbly as the most affected housing markets by the pandemic housing boom, like Austin and Phoenix and Boise. And those markets are correcting the fastest. Honestly, I was really looking forward to a more balanced market this spring, but I'm worried we're not gonna get it due to lack of inventory. So here's what I find interesting. Even with tight inventory, Fannie Mae thinks that home prices will continue 
continue to go down. Following the 2.5% drop in U.S. home prices in the second half of 2022, Fannie Mae expects U.S. home prices to fall another 4.2% in 2023. Then in 2024, Fannie Mae economists expect U.S. home prices to fall another 2.3%. Now, this is on a national level, so while it may be true and prices may continue to fall, it doesn't mean that every single regional housing market will experience price declines. From the peak during the pandemic boom, probably, but below pre-pandemic prices, not likely. And as Lambert points out, if Fannie Mae is right, this housing slump would see the national housing market pass through a mild housing price correction not a full-blown housing price crash. After all, if these price drops do happen, national home prices would end 2024, still up 29% from March 2020 price levels. In their press release on February 21st, Doug Duncan, the senior vice president and chief economist for Fannie Mae said that while they believe the economic downturn will not start until the second quarter of 2023, they still think that a mild recession is in the cards. All I can tell you is what I'm experiencing in real time is the beginning of more buyer activity with not enough inventory causing multiple offers on those houses that are now coming on the market that show well and are appropriately priced. And when I say appropriately priced, that means that the sellers are not pricing their homes where the peak prices landed last year. If they're smart, they're coming down from the top to make the house more attractive to buyers because they know if they price it right, buyers will escalate that price higher. Those sellers that are greedy and are pricing their homes where the highest comps landed are sitting on the market until they reduce their price to get buyer activity. I am seeing this firsthand. Where I am, buyers will not buy into overpriced houses, and yet they will escalate the price on appropriately priced houses. You need to be humble to succeed is the message I'm seeing out there. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to affordability. You know, I keep talking about what's happening in my market in the DC area because real estate is very localized. Well, I wanna know what's happening where you live. Are you seeing multiple offers like I am? Are you seeing a lot of inventory? Are you seeing a lot of foreclosure signs or short sales? Definitely comment below, tell us where you live, and tell us what you're seeing. It is the best way that we can really know what's happening in our housing market. I reported last week that even builders are increasing their prices as they release new phases of homes to be built. Both Toll Brothers and TriPoint Homes are increasing their prices. But I know this is not happening all across our country. In Redfin's latest housing market update, they report that the median sale price fell in 21 of the 50 most populous U.S. metros, with the biggest price drops in Oakland, California, down 9.7% year over year, Austin, Texas, down 9.5%, Sacramento, down 7.1%, Phoenix, down 6.6%, and San Jose, down 6%. They also reported that prices increased the most in Columbus, Ohio, up 12.2%, Milwaukee, up 11.9%, West Palm Beach, Florida, up 9.8%, Miami, up 9.3%, and Indianapolis, up 8.5%. You can see what I'm saying. Real estate is very localized. It's just so different depending on where you live. But the one thing that we all have in common is a real affordability problem. We need more inventory so we can lower the cost of buying a home. Honestly, I don't think builders have recovered yet from the 2000 2008 housing market crash. And until we see a huge influx of inventory, I think we're in for a lot more pain. Let's look at a couple more data points from Redfin's latest housing market update to see what's happening in most of our country and the trends moving forward. Active listings, the number of listings for sale at any given point during the four week period ending February 19th, were up 21.1% from a year earlier, the smallest increase in two months. Months of supply, 
a measure of the balance between supply and demand calculated by the number of months it would take for the current inventory to sell at the current sales pace was 3.8 months down from 4.3 months a month earlier and up from 2.1 months a year earlier this is really interesting because it shows the trend moving into the spring market homes that sold were on the market for a median of 51 days that's up from 32 days a year earlier and the record low of 18 days set in May. On average, 5% of homes for sale each week had a price drop, up from 2% a year earlier. The average sale to list price ratio, which measures how close homes are selling to their final asking prices, was 97.8%, down from 100.1% a year earlier. So all this is very interesting because as we're entering into the spring market, which usually is the busiest time of year for the housing market, we should see inventory selling faster at higher prices. So what we're gonna see in the next few months, I think will really dictate what's gonna happen in the next few years. I hope you got some value to today's video. It's a lot of work, but I really try to give you the most up-to-date information on the housing market so you can make the best decisions for you and your family. If you did get some value and you want to show our channel some support, definitely smash that like button, comment below, and subscribe to our channel. It just motivates us to make more videos. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye!